Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Coding Like Mad MATLAB tutorial. In today's tutorial, we will be doing part two of our table series, looking at splitting data, finding groups within data, and applying analysis to those groups. If you missed our previous tutorial, you can click this box here, or if you missed our file loading tutorial, please check it out here. As in the last tutorial, we begin with a simple piece of code that lets us load a table from file and then perform a simple analysis of its columns. As before, we're going to use the read table command to load the table from disk. Let's take a look at the table that we would load in this case. As you can see, it includes a series of dates, weights, exercise, calories, and a, an entry indicating a mood on a particular day. This was the same table we used in the last example, and we're going to reuse it again in this tutorial. In the last tutorial, we visualized this data according to the mood on a specific day. The easiest way to do this is to index the table using logical indexing. In this first plot, we select all the rows where data.feeling is equal to bad, and then plot the dates and calories for those entries. In the second plot, we do the inverse. In the last tutorial, we saw this pop out a trend in the data, so let's go ahead and visualize that now. As you can see, bad days have higher calories typically than good days. In this tutorial, we'd like to do the split in a more natural way. To do this, we're going to introduce a new command called find groups. Looking at this new code block, we see that it takes a column of the table as its argument, in this case, the feeling column. It returns two arguments, the groups and a key. Groups will contain just numbers starting at one of each unique entry in the column we gave. So a bad feeling will have its own group number and a good feeling will have another and so forth. The key tells you how to map from the group numbers back to the original feelings. Of course, this works for more than just strings as in this example. This function's pretty amazing actually. You put a table column in and it splits the table up for you. Let's take a look at how to use this information with a new command, gscatter. As you can see, gscatter takes as input an x value, in this case weight, a y value, in this case calories, and a grouping variable, either data.feelings or the groups we just calculated. So let's visualize this. As you can see, gscatter works fine with the feelings column directly, but we can also feed the groups we calculated earlier in as well. In either case, we get a nice list of groups visualized for us. This is the great thing about MATLAB. It just does the work for you. Next, let's split the data table according to these groups. To do this, we're just going to use logical indexing again, where we use the group numbers we found using find groups to split the rows up. So here, we're going to have the rows with group label one corresponding to bad uh, in a table called bad table, and all others in another table called other table. Next, let's go ahead and visualize these again. So we'll add some code for doing this visualization, and in this case, we're just going to plot the bad table date and calories and the good table date or the other table date and calories, just as we did before. So if I run this code here, what I will see is exactly the same graphs we generated the first time, only this time generated uh, using grouping variables rather than uh, an explicit comparison of the feeling column. Now we will move on to calculating functions over groups. You can, of course, use the above trick to make many subtables, but it is more convenient and easier if we can apply a function to the table directly. For example, what if we wanted to calculate the mean value of the table separately for each group we identified before? For this, we're going to use the split apply command shown here. So how does split apply work? As you can see, it takes three arguments, a function, a variable to act on, and a grouping to use. Here we are using the mean, the calories from the data table, and the groups from the feeling column of the data table. You might have noticed the at symbol there. That's called an anonymous function handle, and it's basically a way to pass a function as an argument. I hope to cover this further in an advanced MATLAB tutorial video. If I execute the code, you can see there are actually four values, one for each group's mean. 
Next, let's add some code for calculating a bar chart of the results. By using the xtick labels command with the key, we can plot the mean values of each group. Alternatively, you might like to plot the standard deviation of each group. As you can see, several columns are zero due to only having one entry in the table. In this tutorial, we've covered how to find groups and tables, plot those groups using gscatter, and apply functions to those groups, finishing off by visualizing the outputs with a bar chart. If you want a more basic introduction to tables, you can also look at our earlier tutorial on the subject. If you've liked this tutorial, please consider hitting like or subscribe. We'll be doing a lot more of these tutorials covering both advanced and basic topics, so expect more content soon. If you have feedback, constructive or otherwise, feel free to put them in the comments below. As always, I will see you next time.